This is your guy, S.D. Booker, with the Toast to the Men. Before you listen to this video, hit the subscribe button. Definitely hit the like button. Hit that like button. Let's go. Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. A toast to the Men. Welcome to A Toast to the Men with your guy, S.D. Booker. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for the support. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. Let's go. Wow. The locks versus Dipset. Man, so many things we can learn from this. This was a, a versus. Uh, and if you, you know, uh, late to the party, versus is an online uh, challenge between musical artists or uh, musicians or groups, even groups. Uh, so they've had Earth, Wind, and Fire against the Isley Brothers, DMX challenging um, or versus Snoop Dogg, Jeezy versus Gucci Man, so on and so forth. They had a, they've had a few of them. Uh, last night was the group The Locks out of uh, where they out of Yonkers, New York, versus Dipset out of Harlem, New York, and. You know, I watched this versus and I was like, wow, there's just so many nuggets you can take from it. And uh, first of all, I want to say there's levels to this. There's levels to life. There's levels to success. There's levels to discipline, professionalism, punctuality. There's just levels and everybody is not on the same level. We determine what level we're going to be on. We, we determine what level we're going to excel to. It's all on us. You can't blame anyone else for which the level you're at. And I saw one group, the locks, very professional, very prepared, tight, tight chemistry, a tight bond and friendship amongst them. I saw grown men. I saw professionals. Someone who takes their craft seriously. And then Dipset, I saw young men <clears throat> in grown men's bodies. I saw a young mindset. I saw undisciplined unprofessionalism uh, yeah I was disappointed in those guys to start off Dipset was an hour late to their own event <clears throat> at Madison Square Garden I'm talking about New York Madison Square Garden the mecca the mecca of hip hop I don't believe Dipset has ever headlined, or in this case, co-headlined a concert, an event at Madison Square Garden. People dream of performing there. People dream of playing basketball there or performing as a musician there. And they got that opportunity. And this is what you call an epic Fumbling another bag. Now they got paid for last night, but they could have piggybacked off of last night and got many more bags. They tarnished their brand, their names, their legacy, character, respect. They tarnished all that. May have lost it altogether. Um, you can tell. Those guys were high, uh, <clears throat> you know, with Dipset, you got the uh, head honcho, creator, founder, owner of the brand, Dipset, that's Cameron. And then you got Jim Jones, who was once the muscle and hype man for the group and turnt rapper. And then you got Jules Santana, who uh, they met he was a young guy, a young a young boy, maybe around eight, nine, or ten. And at the time, Cameron and Jimmy, around fifteen or sixteen, maybe maybe even seventeen, they met this young boy Jules. 
groomed them, raised them, and uh, and then you got the uh, the fourth member, I guess. He, he, I wouldn't consider him a rapper, uh, Freaky Zeke, who's the hype man. And aside from Cameron, you can tell these guys are high, extremely high, or inebriated. And man, that's just a lack of professionalism. Uh, brothers, always be professional. Always be a player. And when I say always be a player, I'm not saying have more than one woman. I'm not saying have multiple women. I'm not saying play mind games. That's not what I'm saying. It has nothing to do with women in this aspect. I'm saying always have an aura about yourself where you're respected and you're on point. That's what a player is, someone who's on point and who's about his business. You know, these guys aren't players, Dipset. You know, they want to be thugs. They want to be gangsters or gang affiliated, which I could never be. I could never be uh, a gangster in the aspect what, you know, they're pushing <clears throat> rags and colors. And I can never be a thug. It's in me to be a player. It's in me to move a certain way. I like to dress well. I like to carry myself a certain way. I like to have respect. Uh, I like to be sober-minded, calm, cool, collected. I just like to move a certain way. And you can see, man, these guys are young boys and grown men's bodies. They didn't know the words to all their songs. They were lip-syncing, singing over the voice other song of the actual records. <clears throat> Even when Jadakiss, member of the locks, called them out on it, they kept doing it. The chemistry was not there. They didn't even know each other's songs off their solo albums. Uh, they couldn't even be the hype man for each other on each other's solo albums or solo records. That means they're not digging each other like that. That means they're not bumping each other's music like that on the solo albums. Chemistry wasn't there. Uh, so looking at this, we can apply this to real life and how we move in real life in our own lives. And we can say what we don't want to do and what we do want to do by looking at this event. On the other hand, the locks out of Yonkers came through the ranks uh, <clears throat> of Bad Boy, then Rough Riders, kind of put on by Mary J. Blige back in the day. These guys have been knowing each other since they were 12 years old. They don't have a, uh, a leader. They're all leaders in their own right. And you can tell they respect each other as so. This is uh, the locks and their label D-Block is something they built together. So there's a certain amount of respect around them, amongst them, that's not amongst Dipset. I've seen situations where Cameron would let them know that he is the head honcho, he is the leader. And let them know that they're soldiers in his army. So the respect is not there. The reverence for one each other, one another is not there. Which is the total opposite of what's going on with the locks. They all bring something to the table. They are all owners or co-owners of that brand. And they respect each other as so. The chemistry amongst them when their performance was impeccable. They performed joints on their solo albums, and you can see the other two members, respective members, 
finishing the lyrics or joining in on the lyrics as hype man on their brother solo joints. That means they're bumping their brother solo joints. They're into their brother like that. Their stage presence was on point. Now, I'm sure they probably had something to drink, maybe smoke something, but you couldn't tell. You know, you couldn't tell. They were professional. They, uh, the vocals were crisp. Stage presence, like I said, perfect. They remember all the lyrics to their songs. They had moments where they rap a cappella. They had moments where the DJ would switch up beats in the middle of them rapping. They would just stay on point, on key, on rhythm. It was fluid. It flowed seamlessly. It was, you saw the two, <laughs> two different groups, man, night and day. Night and day. Uh, the respect was there, you saw, with the locks. The chemistry, the respect, the continuity. And it just wasn't there with Dipset. And that's why I say, man, I uh, often say, when you do business with brothers, make sure they respect you. And make sure they see you as a valuable partner. Partner. Not player, but partner in, in what you guys are doing. Also, on the flip side, so you can properly put in the effort you need to put in and respect what you're doing uh, in the business that you have with other brothers or another brother. Make sure you feel you bring value to the team. So therefore, you're fully vested. And you're going to give full effort. Uh, if not, man, I think it turned ugly. Man, I think it turned real ugly. Uh, throughout the years, I've never heard of the locks breaking up. I've never heard of these guys beefing. Throughout the years, I've heard of dipset beefing, uh, disrespecting one another, insulting one another. You know, uh, it's documented. Jules Santana has had his problems with drugs. He just got out the penitentiary maybe a year ago. A little longer, maybe. Uh, Jim Jones, his problems with the law. And I think it's a uh, direct reflection of the leadership. The leadership within themselves and the leadership of Cameron, since he is the head honcho, that is his brand. Uh, yeah, man, you gotta, you gotta, <clears throat> in order to be a good leader, you gotta be a good soldier. And so you can have respect uh, for the soldiers, or for the leaders, you can relate. And I think Dipset lacks that. They lack that. It was moments where Jules Santana laid on the stage as if he was bored and, and going to sleep as the lots were performing. Man, that's childish stuff. That's young man stuff. And this brother got kids. This brother has a woman. Uh, what's her name? Kim Bella. This guy, man, Freaky Zeke, the fourth member, the hype man, this brother, I'm 45, man. I think he has to be about 45. This brother danced for four hours straight. Four hours straight. Say, man, that's drugs, brother. Ain't nobody, and I'm in a fairly good condition, fairly good shape, man. For 45, I got no complaints. But I can't dance for four hours straight. Man, I, yeah, that's 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 something going on there. For a 45-year-old man to dance for four hours straight, and this guy is not in, like, great shape. That's something going on there, man. Those guys are dusted. Unprofessional. They're getting beat up on social media, and rightfully so. 
and the locks, especially Jadakiss, are getting all the praise, and rightfully so. Man, there's levels to this thing. And how serious you take your craft, your profession, your art, that's how serious someone else is going to take you. The locks, man, have stood the test of time because they're professional. They show up and they show out. Now, I advise you to go see this, man. It was epic. It was entertaining. Dipset is known for their drip, their style, being trendsetters in style. They had on all the jewelry. Looks like they had on some custom wear, some custom made attire. The locks, on the other hand, simple. Shorts, shirt, hat. I don't even think they had on shades, man. Locks. And hey, man, they had on the Tims. And they showed up and showed out. I think Dipset thought that drip and the jewelry would give them the edge. But let me tell you something, man. Whatever you lack in style, make up in substance. When, when it's all said and done, yeah, man, we all enjoy some cake, some pie, some cookies, some sugar, that sugar rush. But hey, man, ain't nothing like some meat and potatoes. That substance. And that's what you want to bank on, man. That's what you want to root your foundation in. Meat and potatoes. Substance. Dipset had no substance. None at all. And uh, it was embarrassing for them. It was embarrassing. But hey, man, we can take something from this. Learn something from it. From both sides. I want to also say, man, when I was doing my research, and yeah, I do research. <clears throat> my videos aren't scripted, but I do have a framework. And I do have talking points I want to touch on. Sometimes I forget because it's not scripted, but I do do research. That's a part of being professional. So as I was doing my research, man, I saw where, you know, Jada Kiss was told at 12 years old to start earning money. His parents weren't going to do anything for him. They keep a roof over his head. But that's it. And so he started peddling into the, you know, the D-R-U-G game. And then eventually he started making money by rap battling. Man, he even entered a contest in Florida, coming from New York. He entered a contest in Florida in a rap battle. And so I say that to say there's levels to it. This brother knew at a young age what he was here to do. And it was apparent last night that that guy's special. He's something special. And he takes it serious. He didn't waste his talent. He honed his skills. And I advise every brother to do that, man. Focus on your craft. Focus on your God-given talents and gifts. Women going to be there. The club, the party is going to be there. Everything is going to be there, man. Ain't nothing new under the sun. It's all going to be there. But you only have so much time to do it in this body. So focus on that. I want to leave with this. Also in my research, or not even research, just reflecting on what I know. The locks. These guys have juice bars. So they believe in juicing. They believe in living life to the fullest in a healthy way. Although they, you know, they toke. And uh, they probably do a little drinking. But they own juice bars. And they believe in juicing. They believe in exercising. I've seen these guys do pull-ups. At 40 plus years old doing pull-ups. That's a hard exercise to do. And, uh... Skin was immaculate, not out of shape, on point, man. Eyes look good. Everything was on point. Dipset looked unhealthy. They really looked unhealthy. And I'm going to tell you something else. The locks, all three are married. 
All three are married with the locks. That says a lot. I don't think that's a coincidence that they look so healthy and are married. I don't think it's a coincidence that they carry themselves like grown men and they carry themselves as professional men and take their, their job seriously and they're married. Dipset. None of these guys are married. Ju Santana has a, a long time <clears throat> girlfriend. Uh, Jim Jones has a long time girlfriend. But it's something different, man, in my belief about being married. There's a certain responsibility and accountability that comes with knowing this person is carrying my last name. This person is looking at me, at my moves, how I move, my mannerisms, what I say, what I do. Am I a man of my word? Am I responsible? Am I disciplined? And I'm responsible for this person because they carry my last name opposed to shacking. And I know a lot of brothers, you know, nowadays got a thing against marriage. But I think more so it's not against marriage. It's more so against divorce. And I agree. Men don't get treated fairly in divorce court. I agree. But brothers, I just believe, man, if you choose the right one, select the right one. Marriage could do so much for you. Uh, you got someone who's a helpmate. You got someone that's going to balance you out. You know what I'm saying? The word says man should not be alone. After man, God created all this stuff for man. Then he said he shouldn't be alone. Man, man needs accountability. Needs responsibility. He needs that, 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 that person, woman, who's, who's different from him, right? But balances him out. She has certain needs and wants. And it keeps him on point. You know why the only reason brothers work and brothers want certain cars, certain homes, want money saved, uh, 401ks, whatever, man, stocks and bonds, haircuts, whatever it is, right? It's women. It's for women. It's either to attract women to or to get keep the woman that you're with impressed with you. All right. It forces us to keep reaching for higher heights and challenging ourselves. And that's a good thing as long as it's rooted in righteousness and we're pursuing our gifts, our talents, our mission, our purpose. You know what I'm saying? And I always say it's an order to it. So, you know, don't do it for the woman. She's a byproduct. She she reaps the benefits of you doing the right thing. All right. But yeah, man, it was it was something to see. And uh I just saw the difference in the two groups and in, in the two sets of men. It was a vast difference. It was eye opening. And uh it's like wow, wow man, this is uh this is something I gotta speak on. Someone's speaking on it. So yeah, let me know what you think. Hey as always, from me to you, love, peace.